Good morning. What word gets shorter when you add two letters to it? Short. Hmm. I got a question for you, dear brother and sister of the Church of the Living God. Do you think you're going to get to the judgment seat of Christ and the Lord is going to admonish you for being too strict on sin? For being too strict on separation? For being too strict on sanctification? Can you be too serious? Well, when it comes to things pertaining unto our Lord, no. But there are some out there who want to interject working to stay saved and be saved. And those you've got to watch out for. Especially those who for a while you think are legit and then lo and behold, they actually do teach works-based salvation. And that uh, eternal security is this Calvinistic nonsense this conditional <laughs> eternal security. Have you ever heard of that? Calvinists are rife with this. Well, yes, so long as you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, you have eternal security. You're eternally secure. But when you go astray from that, yeah, guys like Paul Washer, you know, who gets right to the edge of um, working to stay saved, who gets right on the edge of being against eternal security, once saved, always saved. Yeah, watch out for devils like Paul Washer. But <clears throat> the thing is, brethren, those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, are we going to get to the judgment seat of Christ and the Lord is going to admonish you for being too strict about sin in your life, about being sanctified? I don't think so. But see, there are some of you who I love so dearly who are right now struggling so much with, the, uh, with your life in Christ and um, you doubt whether or not you are truly of the church of the living God. And every day it seems to get worse and worse for you. Hopefully in this video, with this video, we will address some of this stuff. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please turn with me. Come on. Turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. To 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? Please read with me. Please go with me where we go in the scriptures. Please read along with me. Check me out. And also read along with me because sometimes this, my mouth, will go quicker than my brain. Sometimes I will skip a groove, unfortunately. If you got a question about any of the context that we don't cover today, pause the video yourself and search the context on your own time. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Or, Are you making excuses on why you're not going to read the scriptures? And even use legitimate circumstance, but yet use that as a excuse to not physically read the scriptures when you know very well that you are able. Or, are you avoiding the scriptures because when you read the scriptures, as the church of the living God, God who dwells within you, he seems to put his finger right on that thing that you're dealing with, and right now you don't want to deal with that. 
Hmm? We'll touch on that a little later. Okay? But, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 31 on to 34. We're going to have just, we're going to do some references here. This is not going to be an expository video. But, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 31 on to verse 34. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I die daily. And this is where Ezekiel chapter 13 would have come in. Um, part of this video, Ezekiel 13 has something to do with uh, something that, you know, wanted to touch on. But what the Lord gave me uh, right here, I uh, don't have the time today for Ezekiel chapter 13. But there are some rejoicing in that they have this so-called liberty to sin. You know, you read 1 Corinthians chapter 5 about, you know, the guy who was having relations with his stepmother or his, uh, his father's wife, excuse me. And um, the Church of the Living God at that time were saying, were being basically like, we're not judging you. This is when you need to come to us when you are in this kind of a trouble. You need to be around us. Paul says, uh, no, no, get, get away. You need to get right with the Lord. You go away, get away from us. Why? Because a little leaven leaven is the whole lump. But there are those of Christianity, you know, well, hey, you just saved yourself by your belief. God's grace covers it all. You know, yeah, you shouldn't do that. But go ahead and do it anyway. Don't worry about it. Because you're, you're, you're saved, right? But see, someone of the Church of the Living God, you get that guilt, that shame, knowing that you have let down the Lord, knowing that you have done contrary. And you who are saved, for a moment to gratify and to ease the blow, you might even give yourself over to that. It's like, well, yes, his grace covers it all. Yes, I am saved by his grace through my faith. Yes. But see, you and I who are saved, we, we don't operate like that, do we? Do we? No. No. It's a daily death. We have to die daily to ourselves. Die daily to the world. To sin. To that sin that, so, that doth so easily beset us. Yes. And while some of these Christians, it's like, well, I'm saved because I just believe. You're being too extreme. You're being too extreme. You're going to lengths that God wouldn't want us to go. You got to, you know, a little doesn't hurt. Hey, you got to be like the world to win the world. Look, I love you. If you actually believe that, you are just downright stupid. Willfully ignorant. You're stupid. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Okay? If that is your mentality, you are stupid. Willfully ignorant. Okay? Give me a break. But we're dying daily. <laughs> Sometimes even literally. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Verse 32, if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Ah, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. What is Paul referencing? Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. Hold your place. Isaiah chapter 22. Okay? We've talked about this before, but it is apparent that we need to talk about it again. Okay? I love you. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. I wish I could be there physically to be there for you. Brethren, there are many out there who are suffering right now. Pray for them. 
Isaiah 22, verses 12 on to verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. Well, a lot, of, especially uh, in the church buildings, Christianity, uh, his grace covers it all. Y you shouldn't do that. But don't worry. If you do, hey, God understands. Like I said, you think of the judgment seat of Christ that our Lord is going to be admonishing you for being too strict about sin in your life, about being too strict about being sanctified? Huh. I don't think so. Now, if you are being too strict about, like, say, sanctification, and you're sitting at home doing absolutely nothing, okay, that you're using sanctification, well, I can't go outside ever because, you know, if I do, then, you know, I I'm going to sin. Well, you're going to sin every day. Okay, you need to read 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul talks about that in great detail, okay? But let's continue with this, okay? And in that day, we're in Isaiah 22, verses 12 on to verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen, killing sheep, eating flesh, drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Hey, throw it all in the wind. We got to do it. A little doesn't hurt. Hey, his grace covers it all. Read Romans chapter 6. Now see, that's for you guys who are fake. But those of you who are of the church of the living God, you know this. You know this. But let's continue. And it was revealed in mine ears. Here's the scary part. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Oh boy. There are some of us from the Church of the Living God who have pet sins. And well, whatever they may be. Okay. Maybe maybe you drink too much. There's nothing wrong with drinking. A little alcohol. There's nothing wrong with it. When you get, be not drunk with wine, which is excess, okay? Use a little wine for, the, for thine often stomach's sake and thy infirmities. I just messed that up. Excuse me, okay? But maybe you're getting a little too friendly with the wine, huh? Maybe you chew tobacco. Maybe you smoke cigarettes. Hmm? Maybe you watch television. Hmm? Maybe you binge eat. Whatever it is. With some of us. With some of us. There are those besetting sins that. We don't want to give up. Because I'm going to subject. Submit unto you. Is Satan holding a loaded pistol at your head, forcing you to do what is contrary? No, he isn't. Even if your environment might suggest to you, we're going to touch on that. Is God holding a loading, loaded gun at your head, forcing you to do what he wants you to do? No, he is not. I'm going to submit. Do you really want to give that up? If you do, good. But remember, we have to make the right choices. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Let's live it up, right? But manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 2. And this is where works salvationists <laughs> 
who say also that you can lose your salvation today, you can go to hell. You can go to hell. In time now. But, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 14. But these, as natural brute beasts, natural, natural, is not circumcision against nature? Why are you saying that, Brad? Well, Paul, in the Pauline epistles, which is doctrine for us today, you filthy devil, um, beg your pardon, um, Paul gives an example through the thing of circumcision. Okay, And we are circumcised today with that circumcision made without hands, the Lord living within us. Okay, and the Lord living within us, which makes us a new creature, is that circumcision between us and this sagging skin suit. That's because that's why you can eat pork. That's why you don't have to worry about touching certain things because the Lord is that circumcision made without hands. Okay, but see, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. God made all men. Yes, he did. But there are those who are made to be taken and destroyed. Not like elect and non-elect. No, they make their choice. They make their choice. Prove that to you. Speak evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. This is talking about people who have chosen to go after the things of the flesh. Most of the times while putting on a veil of religiosity and justifying it through philosophy and vain deceit. They're made to be taken and destroyed. How so? Because they have made their choice. They are making a choice to go after the God of this world. They want to have both sides, see. They want their cake and eat it too. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and drink the cup of devils. It's either or. Solomon, one of the wisest men ever, he tried to walk both sides, didn't he? Read Ecclesiastes. And he had the means to get the finest, the finest finest of people. And what does he say? Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. And who knew better than King Solomon, right? King Solomon, one of the wisest men outside of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Some like to make an argument for Paul. Maybe you have been wiser than Solomon. I don't know about that, but the point is Solomon ultimate player, had a thousand women at his disposal who were faithful to him. A lot of those women messed him up. But he had the best that life could have. And he tried to walk both sides. And he failed. And at the end of the day, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring everything into a judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. I just bradized that. Not a direct quote, but close. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12. Okay. Hmm. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and, will, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Mm. And this again goes back to people, you know, these Christians wanting to align themselves with those of us of the church of the living God, and they are the ones falling away, being made manifest that they are not of us. Deceiving being deceived. Okay? Having eyes full of adultery, 
that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. And of course, the Lord abhorreth the covetous. Now, yeah, we can't stop sinning. Okay, and if someone comes around to you, say you gotta stop sinning and they don't sin anymore, they have sinned right there, they are they are saying they're they are lying to you, okay? I don't sin anymore. You're a liar. Get away from me. And only God cannot sin. So in them saying that they don't sin anymore, number one, they're lying, and number two, they're calling themselves God. You need to get away from those wicked, sinless perfection people. Hey, the easy believism devils are scoundrels. They're probably all Je Jesuits, the higher-ups. But at least they, they do go after the sinless perfection. It's like, <laughs> yeah, right, because they are the ones that justify sin. Okay? But we read here in Peter that they feast with us. But yet they don't serve our God. But yet they want to align themselves with us as if they do. Hmm. And also, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Natural. Natural. Verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And they feast with us, but they put on religiosity as a try as try to cover. But then again, a lot is revealed of them over time, and you listen to them. Hmm. Interesting, huh? So back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. If I, if after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Beasts. Natural is not in that context. But after the manner of men. The manner of men. What is the manner of man? <laughs> Remember, is not circumcision contrary to nature? Okay? Natural men. He's referring on to these natural beasts. He doesn't say natural in the text. You're bravo, genius! <laughs> yeah. But that's obviously what he's referring to. Verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Mm, corrupt. Now, right away, I used to think when corrupt like corruption he saw no corruption in the grave like a decaying body yes but also when you search in the scriptures the word corrupt corrupt contrary to what is god so when you speak corruptly what are you doing speaking rotten words okay but also contrary to the word of truth Hmm. The Lord had me to do a video where we talk about corrupt and we go through the scriptures uh, using the scriptures as our dictionary. I cannot offhand tell you which one that video is in. But do it yourself. Look up the first reference of corrupt and go on from there. And see, it's like, okay, you'll see. So, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 on to verse 32. And here we see corrupt again. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Corrupt communication. Speaking contrary to the word of God, which is pertinent. And I believe that is in that response to that devil, words to no profit, okay, which will be in the description box, okay. But corrupt communications, 
Let me give you an example of words to no profit corrupt communications. Today, in this dispensation, you got to keep the law to be, stay, to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God. So, wait a minute, Brad, are you calling the law corrupt? No, absolutely not. But see, taking something that is pertinent for another dispensation and trying to make it valid for this dispensation doctrinally, that's corrupting your communication. When we are supposed to be preaching the death, burial, and resurrection, and by grace through faith. They covered this. Those before us covered this in Acts chapter 15. Okay? Got to watch out for these devils, brethren. But let's continue here in Ephesians chapter 4. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Sealed. Once saved, always saved. You can grieve the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God, excuse me that it says there, the Lord is that Spirit, by profanity, yes, but also if you're someone who is saved and you get messed up trying to bring doctrine from another dispensation and make it to pertinent for today, yeah, there are many ways you can grieve the Holy Spirit of God, okay? Let all bitterness and wrath, and anger, anger, and clamor, like banging pots together, a clamorous woman, okay, and clamor, and evil speaking, hmm. evil speaking, evil communications, things that are, or corrupt communications, excuse me, corrupt communication, and evil speaking, hmm. two different things, corrupt communication, seeking to justify yourself by the law, or speaking contrary to the doctrine that is pertinent for us today? Evil speaking. Hey, there are some guys from England I can refer you to about evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And Christ's forgiveness is there for all people to have. But see, you have to go according to his dictate, not your own. You don't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. You're a thief and a robber. Our Lord has requirements today for him to save you. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to take responsibility that you put him on the cross. And you have to fear the Lord. And see, in being broken... That means that when you get to the foot of the cross, you do not say, well, I can do better. And see, right therein, there are many people out there, I've known of some, who have been legitimately broken. Legitimately broken of their self-righteousness. But yet, when they get to the foot of the cross, I can do better. Then, are you truly broken? You say, I can't do better. And at the foot of the cross, it's like, well, since I can't do better, let me eat and drink for tomorrow I die. Second hmm? hmm. Timothy, chapter 2. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Verses 8. On to verse 15. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. The gospel was revealed unto Paul for us today. And the, the majority of the doctrine, the doctrine that Paul wrote in the Pauline epistles is doctrine for us today. Watch out for anyone who tries to tell you otherwise. Watch out for someone who will say, well, what about Hebrews? Okay? We do not know for certain. You can have your hypothesis. You can be so... We do not know for certain whose hand the Lord used to write Hebrews. We don't... You can say, well, this proves this. It's not black and white like it was in the rest of the Pauline epistles. 
but we know who is the author of Scripture. At least those of us who are saved. Wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may obtain that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Elect. Now, as I say to you constantly when we come to these things, because of the wicked Calvinists and the wicked British Hebrew Israelites and the wicked black Hebrew Israelites who say that elect and non-elect, whether by your skin color or whatever the Calvinistic nonsense is, God is a God who chooses, okay? All right? In the very beginning of Scripture, the first dispensation, he chose works. Don't eat from the tree. They ate from the tree. Okay? Under the law, he chose the law. This dispensation, he chose the cross. God elected the cross. So when you do not boot the door, stupid, when you do not boot the door and decide to go through the door, who is our Lord Jesus Christ, you are going his elected way of the cross. Hence, you are elect, going the elected way, okay? That is very simple. But see, Satan uses the ignorance of the scriptures to his advantage quite, quite well, okay? So that's elect, elect here, okay? You go the way of the cross, you are going the way God elected, hence you are elect today. Ultimately, though, God elected Israel, the apple of his eye. Okay? We have not replaced Israel. Watch out for these replacement theology devils like Catholicism, the new IFB. Okay? Let's continue. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to the world and to ourselves. Okay? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. It's not talking about salvation. You know, brother, sister, salvation is the one thing you truly do not have to worry about. Now, we are to examine ourselves. Yes. It is not necessarily unhealthy if every once in a while it's like, wow, am I really saved? But see, when it's happening on a daily basis, and you are genuinely saved, there is a problem there, okay? And that is when you need to, okay, your environment might not be accommodous to this, but you still got to make choices. You're in an era and in a situation, no matter where you go, it's oppression. Walk out the door, okay? Take a walk. Leave. And if we had means, we would help you leave. If we had means. Okay? Leave. But the denying here is not salvation. You deny him uh, according to what he says in the scriptures for us to do today. You deny him and go after your flesh. Deny you grace, mercy, peace, provision, all kinds of th stuff, not salvation. Or else he's a liar. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Because we are of his bones and of his flesh. Okay? And he even mentions that in Ephesians. You know, for we, you know, when he gives the example of marriage between husband and wife and the marriage of the Lamb between how we are married unto Christ, okay? We are of his bones and of his flesh. He cannot deny himself. We are not little Christs. Okay, oh, little, little Christs. Okay, let me write that down for uh, little Christ. So, okay, sorry. I'm writing that down for uh, in the description box, okay? We're not little Christs, okay? Christ Jesus never sinned. 
Never. Can't. He never even had a sinful thought. We can't do that. No matter how you want to. Okay? But he cannot deny himself. See, we have a love of the truth. He cannot deny himself. Okay? If you are genuinely saved, you are saved. You're eternally secure. Okay? Or he's a liar. You can get totally messed up. Yes, you can. But he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. But you, as the church of the living God, you want to put the scriptures away? So then I guess you don't love them then, huh? So your love is conditional? Hmm. But yet he cannot deny himself. Huh. Hence you have a love of the truth. See how that works? You gotta watch out for some of these wicked, smooth, soft spoken devils, brethren. You gotta watch out for these guys. These guys will mess you up because they are the ones who are falling away. They are the ones who are never of us. And they are the ones who can cause safe brethren to fall. Gotta watch out for these guys. Okay? Of these things, Put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Words to no profit. Again, and the, the, you got questions about this? You know, you got some devil disputing this? Check out in the description box. Check out, we go through the scripture, okay? Words to no profit. Hey, you got to keep the law today to be saved. And stay saved. Hey, you can lose your salvation. Hey, you're saved because you just believe. Those are words to no profit. Those are words that are contrary to the doctrine that is for us today. Those are words to no profit. Okay? Okay? Watch out for these guys, brethren. And of course... Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Now back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Oh! Oh! Paul just said, Awake to righteousness and sin not. <laughs> Paul, awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. I know what it's like when you mess up so bad that even a devil, it's like, wow, you're saved. And look at how you've behaved. I've been there. So have some of you. You know what I'm talking about. You can come back from that. You can. You can. You can. Okay? But see, the way you serve our Lord reflects Him. And when you as the church of the living God sin, and especially in front of the unbelievers, and when you sin, as the church of the living God, when a self-righteous, works salvationist devil sees that you, who are saved, act like he does, then the accuser of the brethren comes in and buffets you. 
And that shame, that guilt. And see, some, when you reach that point, you'll be like, well, hey, you know, give, give me a bottle of booze and let me drown myself. No. See, when these things happen, that's when you ought to be like, okay, wow, stop. Stop everything and get your face on that ground and you go to the Lord. Okay? And see, if you're saved and you go to the scripture, the Lord's going to tear your hide off, brother, sister. And if you're saved, you know that. Is that why some of you are avoiding it? Ephesians, back to Ephesians, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Paul said to sin not. <laughs> Brad, don't worry, don't worry. Stay with me. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17, on to verse 28. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, blurring a line of distinction between departing from evil and not. Hey, we all got to do it. We got to make a living. A little doesn't hurt. Hey, we got to reach the lost people, right? Yeah, if God said, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, and then they, and then these wicked devils who are so clever, they'll like go to a Pharaoh, you know, and then they'll try to prove elect and non-elect. It's like, oh, you shut up! Pharaoh already made his choice because he thought he was his own god. Same here. Same here. The blindness of their heart. Like it says in the doctrine that is for us today in Second Thessalonians chapter two. Okay? God shall send them strong delusion. You don't want the truth? Fine. There you go. Believe you're your own God. Believe that you can save yourself by your own belief. Believe that you can save yourself by doing this, that, and the other thing. You go, girl. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Given themselves over. When we read in Romans, God gives them over. See, you have to make the right choices, brethren. There are the, some really smooth devils out there who actually do preach work salvation, who preach against eternal security, Okay, and want to make arguments that there is no such thing as someone who has gone past the point of no return. You sly dog. Okay? There are people who go past the point of no return. Past viewing. What's the response to that? But ye have not so learned Christ. Ah, uh, but see, a whole lot of these devils can learn about Christ and the scriptures even, yes. But see, they're lacking that true relationship with the Lord. And if he is in you, where are you going to go to get away from him? <laughs> if you're saved, you know this, brother, sister. Where are you going to go to get away from the Lord? Or you can sear your conscience. You can try to quench the spirit. It's like, okay, you're doing what I don't want you to do. You're going to have a lot of consequences. Okay? You're going to, you're going to have to suffer consequences. I'm also going to bring chastisement. Okay? You'll come to me. You're going to be in heaven with me. When you die, yes, but see, you're doing contrary. And when you're contrary, I'm going to put you here until you make the right choices. Lovest thou me more than these? Okay? Let's continue. 
if so be, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, the spirit of truth, he will lead you, guide you into all truth. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? And, you know, and then again, these wicked devils will hurt him audibly. You want to hear the Lord speak to you audibly? Read the scripture out loud. Okay? You wicked charismatics. You've seen the devil. If so be ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. And there's a good another one for corrupt. Deceitful lusts. Mm, deceit. Mm, lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true, true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. So that's twice. Paul has brought up sin not, hasn't it? You're keeping count. And <laughs> I don't know about you. I have blown this on many occasions. Be angry and sin not. Hell, I've done that. I've been quite angry and have sinned. Unlike some of these perfect, you know, Brisraelite creatures and these others from up north, these perfect creatures. Even from out west. Yeah. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Why? Neither give place to the devil. Because mm, anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather labor. Let him labor. Working with his hands, that, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. And then we've already covered verses 29 on verse 32, haven't we? Hmm. It's twice. Paul said about sin not. Hmm. And when you read Romans chapter 12, right? Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, what do you read? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The way you serve Christ reflects him. And you know what? I'm going to submit to you even more so when it's just you and these four walls, ceiling and floor. That's the true test. There are many coadjutors and devils that are so good. I I've know of several of them, unfortunately, who are really good. Really, really good. Some that are a lot better than others at their deception. And they put on that facade very good. 
see, the ultimate test is when it's just you and the Lord. Hmm? What are you in that situation? When you think no one else is watching. Right? And you, you we go to First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, verse thirteen on to verse sixteen. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope. To the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hope. What is our hope? Who is our hope? Jesus Christ is our hope. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. He is the resurrection. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the blessed hope. He is our all. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, <laughs> so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Now here comes in part of the argument of these stupid hyper-dispensationalists. Oh, these guys are so atrocious, so atrocious, hyper-dispensationalists. And hyper-dispensationalism is something that is movable so thou canst not know her ways. It really is. Because hyper-dispensationalism at its base says, began with like, well, there are two doctrines, there are two gospels, one to the Jew and one to the Gentile. They, they bring up the argument about when the church began, that there was one of the Jew and one of the Gentile. But also that which is linked on to hyper-dispensationalism um, is this, well, it's faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation. And then these hyper-dispensationalists are the ones who came up with the Romans uh, 9 to 11 nonsense and trying to justify their sin, their heresy of just believe, they go to Romans and say, well, that's actually written for the time of Jacob's trouble. And also to defend themselves, to put on the facade that they're saved, they go to Second Thessalonians and dispute falling away. Okay? That's what these devils do. Okay? That's what these devils do. And see, they would come to this, and they make up arguments, well, like, being born again is only for the Jews. Because it says so in John, and then it says so in Peter, right? So, and what Peter was on to the, was the apostle on to the circumstance. So it must be for the Jews. But then again, we just read about, in Ephesians 4, about putting on the new man, new creature, being born again, a new life. Paul did not use the word born again, but he sure described it, didn't he? Okay? And then these same twits would come to this, be ye holy, for I am holy. Well, that's just for the Jews, not for us. You see how these guys work? They'll do anything to justify sin. And, and where the, what are they talking about, these devils? Go to Leviticus. Okay? And remember, Peter was the apostle unto the circumcision. That's what a scumbag devil like you would say. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, that's what you would say. That's your mindset. That's a mindset that justifies sin. When someone who is saved, born again of the, of the church of the living God, who are in sin, you know what? You know what they don't do? You know what we don't do? We don't make excuses. And see, someone who is an infiltrator, somewhere in there, every single time without exception, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. 
every single coadjutor, every single false brother, every single one that has fallen away and will fall away, who are not of us. There is that excuse, that Adamic nature, pre prevalent. We still battle with it, yes, but see, that's the main defining characteristic to these devils. Okay, but Leviticus 11, verses 44 and 45, okay? For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. That right there is our instruction in righteousness. But see, <laughs> here's the thing, you, you devils. Paul, and what we just looked at in Romans 12, okay, was telling us not to be conformed to this world, okay, to be holy. Okay, he didn't say be ye holy, but he said don't be conformed to this. Be other, separate, okay? He's saying the same thing in a different way. Okay. All right. But see, these devils, it doesn't specifically, you are an idiot. And you are stupid, willfully ignorant to you devils. And they're, they're, a lot of them are smart. They really are. But see, they don't have the spirit. Therefore, Things of God are foolish unto them. Okay? But back to 1 Peter where he says, Be ye holy. But as he which saith, uh, verse 15, uh, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because as it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And also it says that also in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 22 on to verse 26. Let's go there. Come on. Okay? God, brethren, this is the level of the deception that these devils will do. They'll say because it's written in Leviticus and it's written in Peter, therefore it's just for the Jews, not for us Gentiles. Is Christ divided? I thought being saved, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Watch out for these devils, brethren. Leviticus 20, verses 22 on to verse 26. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell in therein spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you. For, the, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. This is great for our instruction in righteousness, yes. But see, this idea of being holy and separate have you not read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18? Okay? Being separate than that crosses dispensational lines. Okay? You gotta watch out for these devils. Very smooth. Okay? And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit the land, and I will give it Unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean. Uh, you know how Paul talked about in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? All right? Okay? Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by beasts, your souls, and the keeping of our souls today is in the hand of our Lord Jesus Christ, with that circumcision made without hands. Okay? Or by fowl, or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have severed you from other people that you should be mine. And of course, today we can eat pork. If you don't want to, great! Knock yourself out. Okay? All right? Now, go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. 
So we are to be separate. We are to be different than that. And a lot of Christianity wants to come in and there's no distinction. Okay? There are those out there who are of Christianity and want to make themselves very distinct by keep by doing works apart from being saved. Okay? That happens quite a bit. Also, that you run into these people who say you got to keep the law to be saved. And the law is not a faith. Okay? All right? But Galatians chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 21. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We have faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is finished. Okay? He is our redemption. He is our salvation. It is His blood that cleanseth away our sin. Okay? We have faith on on him in Jesus Christ okay but if we seek to be justified by Christ we ourselves also are found sinners is therefore Christ a minister of sin God forbid God forbid yeah what does that mean very simply Christ never did ever sin. Christ cannot sin. Okay? All right? He never sinned. You and I cannot do that. Okay? By grace are ye saved through faith. Grace, unmerited favor, bestowed from the better onto the lesser. Okay? He will be merciful to whom he will be merciful. All right? His grace, through our faith, we trust and believe in him. Okay? Yes, by his grace. Through our faith. All right? But see, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. God forbid. Okay? He, our Lord Jesus Christ, never sinned, can't sin. We can't do that. So it is by faith. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. The law was there to show us our sin. You, I don't care who you are or who you think you are, you cannot keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. Only God Good. Jesus Christ did. He is God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He is God. He is the only one who can keep his commandments perfectly. So when he says, for I, through the law, am dead to the law, what does that mean? I, I, can't, I can't. I can't do this. If I mess up at one point, I mess it all up. But we, we have already seen. Paul said twice, don't sin. Ah. Hold on. I am crucified with Christ. Dead to that. Dead to yourself. Nevertheless, I live. Not I. Christ liveth in me, sealed until the day of redemption, you know, the Holy Ghost. 
And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Hmm. Now see, Paul, we have already looked at, said twice about don't sinning. But see, there seems to be a problem, isn't there? Romans chapter 7. And to those of you, my dearly beloved, who are in that state right now, may the Lord give you understanding and knowledge of his grace and of what is, he's talking about in Romans 7. See, now you read Romans 6. Paul gives the rundown on sin. Okay? Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? Verse 15, what shall we, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid! You get saved. Okay? You need to strive to stay away from sin. And verse 15, you're saved. Well, Let's sin because his grace will cover it all. Wrong attitude. Wrong mindset. But see, and especially you can throw these at the, the, um, the sinless perfection people. They're not even worth your time. They're not. You know, well, I don't sin anymore. you got to stop sinning. Paul missed that memo. Some would even point to what we looked at already. He said, don't sin. Uh, sin not. And what do you do about Romans 7? Uh, th that was for those who are not saved yet. Are you mad? Are you mad? So what, Paul wasn't saved? When he this, is the, this is the extent of what these devils will do. To They'll do anything to justify sin. Anything. Okay? That's why these devils will align themselves with people who attack their enemies even though they don't like each other, okay? <laughs> Romans 7, brother, sister, Romans 7. Romans chapter 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. We read 1 Corinthians 15. Paul said, hold your place, hold your place, come on, come on. Reference, point of reference. Verse 34, awake to righteousness and sin not. Whose righteousness is? Not your own. And see, the devil's like to blur that line on you. Paul said, awake to righteousness and sin not. But he says here, for that which I do, I allow not. Sin. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. That do I. Sin. Well, Paul wasn't truly saved yet. But he was saved by... You just go to hell. Shut up. You filth. You filth. Shut up. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Yeah, because the law is there to show you your sin. Now then, it is no more I that do it. But sin dwelleth within me. Where is sin dwelling within you? The spirit that is in you, the Holy Ghost, and John talks about this in 1 John chapter 3, about the Holy Ghost who will not guide you into sin. He cannot sin. Okay? The Lord cannot sin. The Lord in you cannot sin. The Lord in you is not going to guide you into a lie. The Lord within you is not going to guide you to justify sin. It's not going to happen or he's a liar. Okay? But it's the spirit, capital S, versus the flesh. That's what's happening. Okay? That's what's happening. And you read Romans 8, which these devils hate. 
Sin is here. And this is what the heretics and the devils are all about. The, excuse me. This right here. Okay? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. Right? You have the will. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Paul wanted to be sinlessly perfect. And guess what, cousin? It doesn't take you a fraction of a second being saved of the church of the living God. Ha! I can't! I know that. You know that. The devils know that. So what do you do? For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Now see, also when the, uh, a devil will come to this and want to say, well, Paul is, differ is separating that sin from himself. He's not taking responsibility of it. If then I, okay, <laughs> for that which I do, I allow not. Give me a break. No, he is totally, uh, you know, taking responsibility. He's taking responsibility. That's not what he's, he's not distancing himself. What he is saying to you is, brethren, this is your problem. Every single solitary time. And there, the devils out there want to present to you a well-ordered, well-structured form of flesh glorification. And I'm going to be blunt. How can you polish up a turd? Okay? Now the only one who had perfectly sanctified flesh was the Lord because he kept the law which you and I can't do. The flesh is sinful. Even the flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. But see, he did what you and I can't do. He never sinned. He couldn't sin. He couldn't even think of sin. And he kept the law perfectly. Hence, that flesh was sanctified. We can't do that. You know that, brother, sister. You know that. Okay? You know that. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. <laughs> yeah! 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 For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. The hidden man of the heart. Who is that hidden man of the heart? The Lord Jesus Christ, if you're saved. Who is it if you're lost? Ah, that'd be the devil. But I see another law in my members. Your feet. <laughs> okay, that kind of stuff. You perverts out there who take that and make it Go to hell. Okay? But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. You see, what the law proved was flesh, only God, only Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Only God himself, manifest in flesh, could keep the law perfectly. Only he could do it. Other than the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the entirety of Scripture that no flesh can be justified by the law. We already saw it in Galatians. Okay? We already saw it. 
The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Okay? So, as long as our spirit and soul are housed within this, you're going to sin. Drives you crazy. Yes. But you have to know that. And you have to come to terms with that. That does not mean that we do not strive to cease from sin. We are to abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. Yes, we are. We are to flee fornication. Yes, we are. The thought of foolishness is sin. We're not going to get away from it until we die and we get our new body. Okay. We're not going to get away from it. And that's when we come to verses 24 and 25. Paul, who later would say, awake to righteousness and sin not. Paul himself, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Sin is not okay. Paul is not justifying sin in any way, shape, or form. No. What is he telling you? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. The flesh, no matter what you do, is not going to cease from sin. You are not Jesus Christ, who never sinned, who could not sin, even though Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, even though that flesh was sinful. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, kept the law perfectly. Okay? Never sinned, never even thought of sin. Okay? You and I cannot do that. So we realize no matter how hard I try, this is going to get this is going to get into the way. Okay? Every single time. And you know when you go to Romans chapter 8, Okay, verses 19 on to verse 25. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. We don't want to sin. We're going to sin. Okay? We can't escape that yet. Okay? But subjected the same in hope. Who is our hope? Brother, sister, no matter you're saved, no matter how bad you screw up, the Lord will say I will forgive you. You're lost. No matter what you have done, the Lord can save you. Okay? There isn't a sin that his blood will not wash away. Uh, the uh, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is only valid when Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. Okay? The only one who mentions blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't see Paul talk about it. You don't see Peter talk about it. You don't see James talk about it. You don't see John talk about it. You don't see Jude talk about it. But only the Lord Jesus Christ for the death, burial, and resurrection when he was physically present, as he will be physically present on the earth during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand years. That's when you have to worry about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Okay? So, all right? Watch out for that one, too. All right? Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. You know, the sons of God that are talked about in Job, which were angels and stuff like that. And we will be likened on to angels when we get our new body. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Even lost people, yes. 
But see, they're going to the God of this world. They're going to Satan for comfort. Woe to you, brethren, sisters, church of the living God, if you're doing that. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. What is this? The redemption of the purchased possession. What? Why? Why would somebody want to believe that the body of Christ is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble? I'll tell you why. Pride. And also they're deceiving and being deceived like a whole bunch of these devils. Thank you, Lord, for giving us sunshine. Amen. Okay? So when they get into the time, when they get to the great tribulation, right, then you're going to be able to prove just how righteous you really are. It's erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture, the redemption of the purchased possession. For we are saved by hope, the blessed hope. And who is our hope? We've already covered this. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Why doth he yet hope for? We don't see the Lord. In the kingdom of heaven, you're going to be able to go to Jerusalem and see Jesus Christ on the throne. Don't need faith when you can see him. Then again, it's faith law from Genesis on to Revelation. <laughs> you devils, the, uh, your father, the devil, has been working for centuries to get people ignorant of the truth, and you're just banking off of it. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it and of course you know reading the scriptures reading the scriptures Ecclesiastes yes brother sister yes yes you read the scriptures it's supposed to pain you the truth cannot become a glory unless there's a suffering first okay but you read Ecclesiastes 1, 18. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. You know when Solomon talks about uh, be not righteous over much. Okay. That you don't destroy yourself. Uh, I'm writing that down. Be not righteous. So for links. Okay. You can get this thing about, you know, what Paul was trying to comfort us over in Romans 7. Um, you could destroy yourself. You could lead yourself to be destroyed by destroying yourself, striving to be sinlessly perfect. We ought to strive to be, stay away from sin, yes, but you have to realize no matter how you try, you're not going to be... You realize that, right? Have you not figured that out? Yes. That doesn't mean you don't strive to cease from sin. But brother, sister, you got to figure this out. You're not going to be sinlessly perfect down here. You're not going to be the exception of the rule. Okay? That's why we have... You know, we can go to the Lord personally. That's why every day it's like, Lord, I sinned today. Please forgive me of my sins. Please, and you know, I've run into people, well, I don't sin every day. Oh, so for one day you're God? Get away from me. Get. Yeah. Well, I'm not sinning at every moment. Good. But you do sin every day. And if you come across someone who says, well, I don't sin every day, run. And yes. For in much wisdom, the fear of the Lord is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Oh, brother, sister, you don't want to read it. Why? Because you know how inept you are, right? 
The accuser of the brethren is the one who is trying to keep you away from the scriptures or you just don't want to hear that rebuke from the scriptures, do you? And you know what? I love you. I can say that to you. You know why? Pick your part. Ever since the Lord saved me, going on 15 years ago, there has not been one day since. Forgive me this. Where I have not read at least a psalm and a proverb a day. Okay? Now some of you guys, you want to say, well, Brad, you're being prideful. <laughs> We're supposed to search the scriptures daily. Okay? I've been sick. Okay? I thought I was going to die before. Okay? And there was, I know of a sister who was waiting for us, who on her deathbed, all she wanted to do was read the scriptures. Okay? Okay? We are supposed to read the scriptures daily. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? Do it. A little bit more on that in a minute. But like Job says in Job 42, Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes, right? You soon realize, well, guess what? But I can't do it. Good. Bravo. You're on the right path. You gotta understand the grace of God, son. Go to first John. First John. First John chapter 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the capital W word of life, reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, capital W word appears seven times in the scripture. Every time you see a capital W word, it's reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bibles take out first John chapter 5, the Johannian comma, hence six times capital W word appears in a lot of the Bibles. Yeah, okay. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness and shew unto you that eternal life which was which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is not going to guide you on into sin. He will give you over to it, but he's not going to guide you on to it. Okay? If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from most sins. Oh, excuse me, from some sins? Oh, from all sin! If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And witnessing, you know, I've come across people's like, well, I, I'm not a sinner. You're not a sinner, huh? No, I don't think I've sinned. No, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> okay. Let's, can, I, can I talk to you? Have you let, me, here, let me read to you about something in the book of Romans, chapter 3, about that specifically. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Saved. If we say we have not sinned, I don't sin anymore. I don't sin every day. We make him a liar and his word is not in us. Ah, right, see how that works? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now, 
There are many things that might be a contributing factor here. Okay? Your environment, for example. Now, like we said at the beginning of the video, okay? Satan is not holding a loaded gun to your head, forcing you to walk contrary to the word of God. God is not holding a loaded gun to your head, forcing you to do what he wants you to do. It's like respect. People like to say respect is earned. No, respect is given. Because if someone jumps through every single hoop that you assign to them, it's still up to you to give that respect, is it not? Okay? You have to make the right choices. But what about environment? You know, if you're, you know, Psalm 102. Read Psalm 102. We don't have, we're not going to read that today. But Psalm 102. Read that. And note the change where he just goes, but thou, O Lord. That's when he shifts from the personal pronouns of I, 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 me, me, me. But thou, O Lord. Okay? environment can give you reasons yes can but it's not going to pull the trigger is it come on now oh the one brother the hermetic brother who i talked to he he he, he himself it's like well i blame the white man for everything that was going on with me and he's like, I can't blame my environment because my environment didn't force me to do something. And the thing about the environment, look at the Garden of Eden. There was no sin there at all. They could see the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He walked in the garden. They saw the Lord. Okay? Perfect environment. No sin. Yea, hath God said, shouldn't eat from every tree of the garden? Ah, don't worry about it. You can eat from it. You're not going to surely die. You won't die. No, but God knows. See, God's being a mean old God. He's holding back from you something that benefits you, right? If you disobey what God said and eat the fruit, your eyes will be open and ye shall be his gods, knowing good and evil. And here we are today. Don't give me this malarkey about environment. Yes, environment can give you many reasons. <laughs> oh, there are some of you right now who are in environments that I'm not in. Every single moment of your day being oppressed by the devils. Go run, get, it, get out for a while. Find, go out. It's raining. Put on a raincoat. If you don't get out of there, at least for a while, nobody is that. Nobody can withstand that for extended periods of time. Go walk about. Walk the dog. Go say, go somewhere. Get out. Walk away. Yes, you have to go back there, but you need that time away. There are some of you who are like, you know, who live in the midst of Catholics. And you're in circumstances that are not even your choice or some even your fault, like Job, right? But then again, remember what of ultimately with Job, he started to justify himself after continual barrage from his three friends, right? Environment can give you reasons, but it's up to you. You've got to make the right choices. First Samuel chapter 13. First Samuel chapter 13. Here's Saul, King Saul. Yeah, King Saul. King Saul. See, this is one of the reasons why you want to read the Old Testament, the books of the Kings and Chronicles, because you can see types of people that you will run into today in the Kings that you will see and read 
for our instruction in righteousness. But 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 8 on to verse 14. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. This is Saul, okay? Samuel sent him a time, but Samuel didn't show up at the set time appointed. Saul's like, oh boy. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. He did what he wasn't supposed to do. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, ta-da, behold, Samuel came. Brother, sister, you, you, you make a stupid decision, and you decide to give yourself over to whatever, and then right after you do that, the Lord shows you, I gave you a way to escape. And you're like, right? You tell me you haven't been through that one yet. <laughs> and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. And like when you, now, and Samuel here, when you go to the Lord for something, and you read about our Lord Jesus Christ, one thing you lack, he's going to put his finger on that one thing. He does it every time. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, I acted foolishly. I didn't trust you. I've got no excuse. Please forgive me. Is that what Saul said? And Saul said, because I saw the people were scattered from me. The people. And that thou camest not within the days appointed, the people, you, Samuel. Okay? And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. And the Philistines. Oh. Oh. So wait a minute. The people, Samuel, and the Philistines. Mm. Mm. Therefore said I. Ooh. Now I said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, he blames the people, blames Samuel, blames the Philistines. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I had no choice. I had to make supplication to the Lord and do what was not appointed to, for me to do according to the scripture. Kind of like, what was his name? Who, um, oh, was it Uzziah? Was it Uzziah? Who went in um, uh, to offer, um, offering, and the Levites was like, hey, yo, don't, this isn't for you. And he got mad at the priests, and then leprosy broke out in his forehead. Okay? Asa had his feet. I think that might have been Uzziah. But whatever, okay? He went to go and do what was not, Accounted to him to do. But what did he do? He blamed his environment. I forced myself therefore. And offered a burnt offering. I forced myself. I knew it wasn't right for me to do. But I did it anyway. Because of the people. Because of you. Because of the Philistines. I did it. The woman thou gavest me to be with. Thou should... Thou, she did give me of the tree, and I did eat. The woman. The serpent beguiled me. The devil made me do it. Yeah. Oh, the environment that Saul was in there gave him a whole lot of... He, he just named him, didn't he? Then he did contrary, and look what happened. There came Samuel. It 
Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, behaved as though you said in your heart there is no God. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. You know, when Paul and Silas, they were in chains, they sang hymns. Your environment can give you reasons. But your environment doesn't pull the trigger. That's a cop out. No. What is your purpose here? What is your purpose here? Well, Brad, you know, you're you're the Lord's called you to this. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, son. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? It's quite simple what your purpose is. Matthew. Matthew chapter 11. Verses 28 on to verse 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hmm. That's for the death, burial, and resurrection, Brad. Yes, you're right. Why am I here? Why did, why did God create me? Why? Right? Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And see, Christianity has made it a cliche. Yes, God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. Yes, he does. But see, when Christianity says that, they say that to you to bolster up your flesh so you can give them more money and get your best life now. Usually what the Lord calls us to is suffering that he, you know, Paul talks about, therefore I, I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may be present with me. I just brad eyes that, okay? Same with this cliche that, you know, or excuse me, cliche that they, you know, God won't give you more than you can handle. Oh, well, shut up. He purposely gives you more than you can handle so you don't become self-sufficient. He's talking about temptation. And just like we saw with Saul, you decide to give in to that, and then all of a sudden he'll show you the way to escape. <laughs> but you might, okay, you might be saying, well, Brad, that's before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, 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 okay. First uh, Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. Okay? You might not be where you, you want to be, but you're saved. The Lord, He's the one who's going to do these things for you. As far as your purpose, no, get to know the Lord. You're daily, you are in the ministry of reconciliation. Wherever you are in your environment, you are giving a testimony onto those devils that are around you. Think about that. But 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 on verse 8. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have only the elect men and non-elect to be saved. <laughs> Shut up, Calvinist. Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. But, 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 see, God has called a certain way. And you can't boot the door out of the way. You have to go the way of the cross. Okay? Yeah. Let's continue. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the woman, the Roman Catholic Mary. 
The man, your pastor. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and, a, and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ, and why not? A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7, uh, 17 on to 21. We are all in the ministry of reconciliation. For right now, maybe the Lord just wants you to endure where you are. Being that example onto the heathen. They're not, hit, they're not taking it. Your witness is a thing of accountability. Lazarus in life received his evil things and now he's comforted. This is their hour and the power of darkness. This is their best life now. They went to hell. Brad, you're doing... Never mind what I'm doing. Okay, remember John chapter 21? Okay, John chapter 21? Okay? Brad, you're doing this. I, 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 hey! Okay? Some of you, specific, one day you will. One day you will. Maybe not now. Well, one day you will. But see, John chapter 21, uh, verses 19 on to verse 22. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God, talking unto Peter. And when he, spoke it, when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Okay, and he said, Lovest thou me more than these? Peter denied Christ three times and three times. Shimon! Son of Jonah, I was telling me more than these. Okay. Then Peter turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loves following, loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, uh, uh, Lord, Lord, and what shall this man do? What about him? What about him? What, are, you know, you told me to follow you, but what about him? Look what the Lord says. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. It's like, look, I got brother so-and-so doing this. I got brother so-and-so doing that. He's doing that. He's doing that. That sister's over there is washing the, uh, the feet of the saints. Okay? I have this brother doing that. I have your brother doing that. That's what I have them doing. You concentrate on what I've called you to do. But it's not, so what? It will be that, brother. But maybe not yet. But maybe not yet. And what, oh, what will become when the Lord finally is like, okay, now go. Now go. Oh boy. Oh boy. That'll be beautiful. Okay. And Paul talks about this, you know, if, if I'm not of the hand, am I not of the if I'm if I'm the hand, am I not of the body? Okay? Okay. And now we have to address this thing about the not reading of the scriptures. Acts chapter 17, 11 tells us that we are, Acts 17, 11, and go ahead and read the context on your own time. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they re received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Okay? All right? 
But we also read in the Old Testament in Ecclesiastes 12, right? Ecclesiastes 12, 12, verse 12. Ecclesiastes, come on, 12, 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end, and much study is a weariness of flesh. Hmm. Go to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28, come on. Okay? Now, I have to address this. Yes, I spend quite a bit of time every morning in the scriptures with my Lord. Our Lord, yes, I do. My wife does. Okay? She does. Okay? My wife and I have the time to do that. And for what the Lord has called me to do, he gives me the time to do that. Okay? Before, even long before I started doing the videos, um, he gave me time to do that. Okay? All right? And because I spend that much time in the scriptures does not mean that is necessarily what you have to do, brother, sister. But you are to search the scriptures daily. Okay? Okay? Isaiah 28. Okay? Isaiah 28, verses 9 on to verse 13. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay? And then, of course, you read about, you know, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Okay? And you read in Hebrews that meat is for those who are of full age, that have their, ex their senses exercised by reason of use. And you read about Peter saying, we are to desire the sincere milk, sincere milk of the word. Okay? Yes. So, the Lord is going to teach doctrine, number one, for someone who is receiving milk, okay, and drawn from the breast, okay. So, to start, those who are going to understand doctrine are those who are truly going to understand doctrine that are being fed of the sincere milk of the word, okay. And it says that are drawn from the breast, okay, those who ha are eating meat as well, okay, all right. So, and that does not mean that someone, a babe or something, that the Lord will not use a babe. He will, okay? Because the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby, okay? All right? But then again, you know, the babes, as what Paul talked about, not a novice, lest he be puffed up in pride. Seen that before, okay? Okay, unfortunately, yeah. But see, at the base is... Someone who loves the Lord and loves his word. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Stammering lips. Hmm? You ever had stammering lips? People who do not want to hear, okay? To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Why? Why would they not hear? Because number one, they love themselves. Okay, they think that they are gods. They don't want to hear the truth of God's word, right? And see, you and I, as a church of the living God, we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. And hence, because we are having milk to start, he will give us doctrine. And the longer we walk with the Lord, putting our walk into practice, okay, we will eventually be drawn from the breast and be of full age. But yet still, you know, milk and meat. Okay? There's nothing wrong with milk. But see, also, 
right there in verse 10, here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. Okay? My wife and I spent hours, yes, in the scriptures. Okay? Me here and uh, in here and she in there by ourselves with the Lord in the, in the scriptures. Yes. The scriptures tell us here a little, there a little. Okay? But he has given time for us the more the merrier. And the more you read scripture, you quickly realize that it's a uh, weariness of the flesh because the word of God is contrary to the flesh. Okay? Yes. Yes. Okay? But we are to read the scriptures daily, and he says here, here little and there little. Okay? Now, are you in sin because you're spending an hour and a half, two hours, three hours? No. No, you're not. God forbid. No. But not everybody, you know, not everybody has been given that much time. Okay? I know farmers who have uh, responsibilities up to here, yet they can spill still spend 45 minutes in the morning in prayer and reading the scriptures, and before they go to bed, a little bit more reading of scripture. Okay? All right? You might have to get, you might oversleep and get up. It's like, oh, oh, you fall out of bed. Lord, you know, you say prayers. It's like, oh, Lord, I, I'm late. I got to go. Okay? But at some point during the day, you go back to the scriptures. Okay? All right? Uh, I mean, like I said, our sister, on her deathbed, wanted nothing more than to just read the scriptures. This is why a lot of the brethren do not talk to me too much about how they are uh, not reading the scriptures, because you're not going to get, I'm not going to, like, uh, no. There's no excuse. Okay? If you're paralyzed from the neck down and in a coma going to go to the Lord, Okay, and see, that's what some people will do. You will search for excuses rather than, okay, I got, I got five minutes here. Do you carry a sword with you wherever you go? You're waiting in an office, you're at a bus stop, whatever. You got a sword on you? Take out the scriptures and read the scriptures. You got five minutes, do it. Okay? Stop making excuses. Even if they're legitimate. Okay? You can put a book on a table and if you have to, put something in your mouth to turn pages. Okay? But see, there are others as if you continue, okay, those who don't want to hear the word of truth, which we, Church of the Living God, speak. But there are those, but the word of the Lord was unto them that they didn't want to hear. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. You claim to be saved for about eight years, and yet you're now coming out that Paul, within the Pauline epistles, was writing for doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble? You lie! You ain't saved! Studying for eight years? That's not a mistake. That is deceit. Okay? Yes, yeah, safe people can get messed up in a lot. Hey! I believe for a while that, you know, if someone could say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. I believe for a long time that someone could say that to prove they're saved. Uh, guess what? The Lord finally got a hold of me. It's like, Brad. And I repented of it. Okay? Okay? All right? But see, these devils, these fakes, will come and glean the scriptures. Why? And fall backward and be broken, snared, and taken. Just man falleth seven times, but the wicked fall into mischief. Hmm. 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 So, 
here a little, there a little, brethren. Okay? You should read the, read the scriptures every day. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. Okay? Here, here a little, there a little. Okay? Hey, if you can give two hours, three hours, an hour and a half to reading scripture, praise the Lord. Well, you think the Lord is going to say to you, you spent too much time in the scriptures? Ah, <laughs> uh, sure, sure. That was told me before. That was told me before. Brad, you know, much learning doth make thee mad, right? Brad, you need to take a vacation from the scriptures. Excuse you? Excuse you? Uh, uh, the scriptures say... Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, to search the scriptures daily. Okay? You're going to tell me? Take a, You get away from me, man. Here a little, there a little. Okay? If you've got two hours, praise the Lord. The Lord's not going to rebuke you for that. You don't got that much time? You got ten minutes? Got 10 minutes to read a proverb today? You can set a scripture on the table. You can turn a page. There's nothing so drastic that at some point in your day, you can't give 10 minutes to the Lord in reading the scriptures. Don't give me that. Okay? When a sister was on her deathbed and all she wanted to do was read the scriptures, shh, hush! But also, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, excuse me, not 12, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I had one guy trying to defend his easy believism heresy long ago who said to me about Hebrews 4.12, well, that's for the Hebrews. So what, that, that this doesn't apply for today? Get away from me. For the word of God is quick, alive, and powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword. You know, when you take a two-edged sword and you strike something with one side, that edge is going to be a little bit duller than the other side, okay? But see, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Spirit, soul, and joints and marrow is a body. The whole person. Ah, yes. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And of course, like I said, you can read 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 on to 17, Romans 15, 4, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 11. Okay, Paul talks at length about reading the scriptures. Let's see. Some of us, will, no, no. When we read the scriptures, it's a discerner. It cuts the person. Cuts you. Okay? And it, notice it says, piercing and dividing, after you cut something, asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, you read the scriptures, you're of the church of the living God, the Lord, through the scriptures, dear brethren, is going to put his finger on whatever it is that's in your life that you know shouldn't be there. You know you shouldn't be doing that. And when you read the scriptures as a church of the living God, he's going to put his finger on it because that's what the Lord does. Is that why some of you aren't reading the scripture? As a church of the living God because you know that he's going to put his finger on that one thing? Even when I have been in grotesque sin, that's when you go to the scripture and let the Lord beat you. 
Because go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Okay. Acts chapter 2. See, and those of us of the Church of the Living God, we know that if you're doing something contrary and don't want to, you know, go to the Word because you know the Lord is going to attack you. But see, Acts chapter 2, verses 36 on to verse 37. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. Ooh, Peter got really, he hit the nail on the head that ye crucified what you did. Like when you read Romans 3, that's your indictment from the Lord. When you read Romans 1, 2, and 3, that's the Lord's indictment against you. What happens? There are two responses to this. Verse 37, And you charismatic devils, Acts 2.38 is not the gospel for today. Okay? The kingdom of God was being offered unto the Jews first. There were no Gentiles in Acts chapter 2. None. Okay? But, now, when they heard this, their, their indictment, their indictment, he crucified. One thing he lacked. The poor young rich man, he went away sorrowful. Why? Because he had great riches. Paul, the Lord through Paul in Romans 1, 2, and 3, that's why devils hate the Romans road. That's why that idiot from New York uh, did a couple years ago things against it. Um, yeah, that's God's indictment against you. Where should I read uh, the scriptures to begin? Book of Romans. Start in Romans chapter 1. And if you can get to uh, Romans chapter 5. <laughs> okay? But anyway, we start in the book of Romans. Now, when they heard this, their indictment, they were pricked in their heart. You know, like you, you touch a thorn and you get a little prick, a little blood comes out. Just a little. It's a little prick. It's like, oh, and some of those little pricks that you get can hurt pretty bad. But they were pricked to the heart. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Their hearts were pricked. I've seen this, brethren. I've seen this. You, you, Lord's using you to guide you, guide someone um, to him through Romans. And you see that look in their eye? What do I do? Here's your answer. The answer, you know, which is Jesus Christ. I've seen that. But you know what else I've seen? Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Verses 51 on to verse 54. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the murderer, the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Wow, you talk about laying it on the line. You talk about just <laughs> putting the finger on it there, right? Peter, whom ye crucified, but they were like, Pricked in the heart. What do I do? When they, and remember, remember about Acts chapter 7. Verse 1. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? To the religious, those that have the facade of religiosity, Hmm? 
when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And unlike being pricked in the heart, where it's like, what do I do? They gnashed on him with their teeth. I've seen that one before, haven't you? You know that the Lord's going to tear your hide off. Good. And could that be why you're avoiding it? Or is it truly that you're going to gnash on the Lord with your teeth when he cuts you? And if you're saved and have chosen to put these things away, because remember, there's no gun. I wish I could be there personally for some of you. I really do. Philippians 3, verses 8, under verse 14. Ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Well, in context, he's talking about him being a Pharisee. Yeah, but all things. Paul wanted to be dead unto all things. <laughs> and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. And how many of these devils want to go about establishing their own righteousness and come up with horrendous heresies uh, about, you know, chopping up the dispensation just like the devils did before, and so on and so on, okay? But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is... It's which is of God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, which so many Christians deny. Oh, with their lips. Well, I'm a Christian. Of course, I believe in the resurrection. You talk with them. They don't believe in a resurrected Christ. They believe on a Christ that's still on the cross. Hence, it's up to them. Those are the ones who get cut. that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Because, yeah, if you die, somebody got to bring you back to life. The Lord? Yeah. Or because you can do better. <clears throat> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Hmm. Not as though I had already attained. <laughs> Either we're already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend for that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reach, reaching forth unto those things which are before. Ah, and see, that's where the devils come in and they want to keep you shackled in memory of what you did. Now, you are not to forget where you came. Paul's like, I was once a blasphemer and stuff like that. I once persecuted the church of God. Okay, he didn't forget where he came from, but he didn't stay there. And the devils want so much to keep you there and not to go forward, okay? That's what the devils do. Paul's like, look, I've messed up. I, I got right with the Lord. I'm pressing forward. I'm not going to forget where I came from, but I'm not going to stay there. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, 
Here! Here! Not here. Because you cannot be perfect here in flesh. You can't. If someone comes around saying that you can, get away from them. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto where we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, just one verse. 2 Timothy chapter 4, one verse. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I, uh... Oh, 1 Timothy, excuse me, I skipped one. 1 Timothy chapter 6. I skipped one, excuse me. 1 Timothy chapter 6. <clears throat> Verses 11 on to verse 12. But thou, man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight. The good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You're saved, eternally secure. Lay hold on that and fight. And fight. And fight. Second Timothy chapter four, verse five. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of, e of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And we are all in the ministry of reconciliation. Fight. Give up to yourself, but fight as the Lord would have us to fight. And what does he say about that in, what is that, 2 Corinthians chapter 10? What does he say about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10? Hmm? I believe that's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses uh, 3 on the verse 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is, fu is fulfilled. Hmm? Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Fight the good fight of faith, brethren. Lay hold unto eternal life, whereunto thou art called. Continue to fight. Brad, you're not in my environment. You're right, I'm not. I'm not. But you can walk away. And if you can't, if you can't walk away, then you can go to a bathroom. <laughs> there is some place where you can go privately. Shut the door and be with you and the Lord. Somewhere. Doesn't matter where. A bathroom, a closet, it doesn't matter. Fight the good fight of faith, uh, brethren. For these light afflictions are for but a moment, but will work in you an exceeding eternal weight of glory. Fight the good fight of faith, brethren. I love you. I hope this has helped some of you, because this was something that needed to be addressed. A lot of us are struggling. A lot of us are suffering. A lot of us are dealing with this. Fight the good fight of faith, brethren. 
Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. Pray for one another. Pray for us. Watch out for these wicked devils with their smooth speech. Fight the good fight of faith. Love you. See you in the next video.